everyone and welcome to this episode of Libby's Low Carb Lounge and today we are learning how to make fudge. Yes, you really heard me right, fudge. You can actually have fudge that is made with low carb ingredients that honestly tastes better than fudge that is made with sugar and other high carbohydrate items. So let's figure out how to do that today and these are two easy recipes that you're going to learn in today's episode. So to answer that, uh, is there such a thing as low carb fudge? Yes, there is, and you can have fudge just made with low-carb ingredients instead. So let's learn how to do that. Unlike traditional fudge that requires sugar, prolonged cooking, constant stirring, it usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes to achieve the softball stage if you're, if you're cooking it, if you're doing the type that you beat with an electric mixer, that takes a lot of effort too. Well, unlike these methods of, of making fudge, in spite of the fact that it contains tons of sugar, these recipes not only do not contain sugar or other high carb ingredients, but they're very easy. So low carb fudge with these two recipes that I'm going to show you how to make today only takes about five minutes or less to make. Honestly, it's so simple. So let's figure out how to do it. You know, you can find thousands, literally, of low-carb fudge recipes that are affectionately called in the low-carb world as fat bombs or keto fat bombs. The reason that it has that name is the main ingredient in keto fudge, or fudge that keeps you in the state of ketosis or fat burning, is coconut oil, butter, or both. Okay, first off, there are two really easy keto fudge recipes we're going to talk about. One is chocolate and one is peanut butter. So let's make some fudge. For the chocolate keto fudge, in this basic recipe, without any optional add-on ingredients, you will only need a cup of coconut oil, a tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa, more or less, depending on how chocolatey you want it to be, a dash of sea salt or to taste, and either stevia, truvia, which is a mixture of stevia and erythritol, or erythritol itself. If you're using stevia or truvia, you'll probably need one to two packets, depending on how sweet you want it to be, or two um, teaspoons uh, if you're getting it in bulk. Or if you're using erythritol, a fourth of a cup of erythritol makes a really nice uh, sweetener level that will offset the bitterness of the cocoa. Next, you can think about adding optional ingredients or you can just make the basic chocolate bar uh, or chocolate fudge if you want. So you can add finely chopped nuts uh, of any type that are low carb, which are most nuts except for cashews, uh, unsweetened dried coconut, which you can find in most uh, organic or uh, similar stores like Whole Foods. Uh, you can use chopped up soy nuts or textured vegetable protein, which you can also buy in organic uh, grocery stores, or Bob's Red Mill also has this. What textured vegetable protein is, is it's the ingredient that is generally used to make uh, vegetarian burgers, but also if you just leave it in the dry state, it's just essentially uh, soy that is really, really crunchy. I really like it. So if you don't have issues with soy, it's a really nice way to have crunch that you can add to something that is extremely low carb and also contains protein. You can also use low carb dark chocolate chips if you can't find them in your local grocer. You can find them online on our uh, uh, online store or you can buy local really high cacao percent, more than 70% uh, dark chocolate bars and make your own chips. You want to heat the coconut oil and butter if you're using that. Uh, some people will throw a little butter in. Uh, and stevia or erythritol, whatever non-sugar uh, sweetener you're using, until the oil and the sweetener are dissolved completely and you see no further crystals. You want to stir this occasionally as this is happening on medium heat in a medium pan. Then you want to add the unsweetened cocoa and any optional ingredients that you are using and stir this in until it's well mixed and uniform in appearance. Then you take that mixture and carefully, and I say carefully because this is extremely hot in a very short period of time, you want to pour this into candy molds, cupcake papers, or wax paper lined plate uh, until you've poured this all out. You want to have this to be relatively thin so that the uh, ingredients don't settle out and it will stay uniform. 
And then you take whatever mold that you have poured these into and put them in the refrigerator. And in about 20 to 30 minutes, you are going to have some delicious chocolate fudge. Here's a picture of what it looks like just after it's been poured in these little mini uh, candy paper molds. They really hold this nicely and make a really nice shape. And you'll have, peen or you'll have chocolate fudge. Now for the peanut butter fudge, which I like even more than the chocolate, and sometimes I even mix the two flavors together to make a chocolate peanut butter fudge, here's how we make that. If you have issues with peanut butter, you can always use uh, almond butter or any other nut butter that you like. You can grind up very easily uh, macadamia nuts in your food processor and mac make macadamia nut fudge, which is awesome as well. So coconut oil, one cup. You want to put a tablespoon of butter in this. It makes it creamier. You want to add one fourth to one half cup of erythritol a dash of sea salt or to taste, a half a cup of peanut butter or whatever nut butter you're using, a teaspoon of vanilla, and optional ingredients that you can add are unsweetened uh, dried coconut, which I usually use because I love coconut, uh, chopped nuts, or again, you can use TVP, the textured vegetable protein bits, if you don't want to use nuts. They are lower in carb and calories uh, and fat uh, as well. Uh, you want to melt the coconut oil, butter, and the erythritol on a medium pan over medium heat. And once you have melted these and the crystals have dissolved, as you can see in the middle uh, picture on the screen, you want to remove from the heat and then add the peanut butter and vanilla and mix this in really well. You'll add the sea salt and any of your other optional ingredients at this point and mix it well and then pour into molds or wax paper lined pie plate is what I usually use, or you can use a regular plate, uh, but it have to be a deep one or several plates. And then again, once you've put this in whatever form you're wanting it to, ha to have, uh, then you refrigerate it for 20 to 30 minutes. Here's a, a little layout of the peanut butter fudge, and uh, the top left is where the, uh, basically it's all ready to go, all the ingredients are mixed in. Uh, and then you'll see where the peanut butter has been put in and the uh, vanilla as well and the optional ingredients. And in the bottom of the screen you'll see it's poured into a wax paper lined uh, pie tin and at the bottom right you see where this has come out of the refrigerator and has been cut into a number of squares. Voila! In five minutes you have fudge and in 20 minutes you can eat the fudge and in a hardened state. Uh, if you check out our Pinterest boards and other uh, recipes online on our uh, website, and the links will be uh, listed uh, in the end of the video, you can find even more delicious keto fat bomb recipes. And on our Pinterest boards, there are many, many, many of these types of recipes that are very innovative. All right, lessons learned today. Number one, there is always almost always, with very rare exceptions, an alternative way to make the foods and the flavors that you once loved, you can keep them in your life and just make them differently with alternate substitute ingredients. Number two, you can find thousands, literally, of free recipes where someone else has done the work and figured out how to do it to perfection, and you just use their recipes and enrich your variety of flavors in your life uh, let's face it, we have taste buds on our tongue for sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and we're always going to want these. It's just biologic. So to live a life without sweet things is not realistic. So my role in your life right now is to show you how you can make a number of delicious sweet treats while not using sugar and using healthy sugar substitutes so that you can satisfy this desire and keep variety in your food and not return to high carb eating. Number three, this type of fudge will increase your level of ketosis and fat burning. Now let me explain that a little bit. When you are eating coconut oil and butter, those two ingredients in particular and even more so coconut oil, these break down into ketones, carbon dioxide, and water. And so if you are in the state of ketosis, you are adding even more ketones uh, and your serum ketone levels will increase, meaning you will more effectively burn fat when you eat this type of fudge. So not only is it delicious, but it also can serve a good function of keeping you full, 
keeping you away from high carb treats and increasing your level of fat burning. And number four, they just taste great. You, they really taste good. And all of your um, high carb eating friends will love these too. All right, folks, we'll see you next time on Libby's Low Carb Lounge. I want you to go out and make some fudge today. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Libby's Low Carb Lounge.